Good morning and welcome to the White House Bible Study Hour. We're so glad that you can be here as we're getting into lesson number four, The Lord Hears and Delivers. You know, it's an exciting lesson that we're going to get into today as we look more into the Psalms. But before we do that, uh, Heather has something to share. Sure do. Our free offer today is The Faith of Desmond Doss. It is a story from World War II, and it is a story of faith, about how faith can help to shape our actions. Okay, <laughs> uh, Just go to our website and go to the free offer. Click on that, and we'll get that right to you. And while you are there, feel free to go to our prayer and praise section, and we would love to be prayer partners with you. All right, thank you. You know, the story of Desmond Doss is one that's absolutely amazing. Right. And uh, if you don't know who Desmond Doss is, that's, that's a great intro to it. Uh, but uh, as we get into our lesson, it's something to think about uh, that, that uh, the man Desmond Doss and his great faith. But Definitely. Uh, our scripture reading today comes from uh, Psalms chapter 34 and verse 17. And it says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. So let's have a word of prayer and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings and your watch care. We pray now that as we get into the study of your word, that you would guide us and that you would lead us. Give us wisdom as we hear uh, these truths that are so important to each one of us. As we, we will all face adversity, but we have the assurance that you will hear and you will deliver us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so... Uh, I am going to go over the scripture reading again, just to kind of reiterate. So, uh, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. Now, I, I do want to ask, does God hear everyone's plea? Yes. He hears everyone's plea. But there is a special plea that comes from the righteous. And that's because of their connection with God. And so that's one thing that's very valuable, that's very important. God hears all people's plea for deliverance. But the continued deliverance comes through our connection with him. But it says, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Now, does it always feel like that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It doesn't feel that way. As a matter of fact, there were a few times David didn't feel that way. What that does, it's, it strikes home at the reality of uh, life can be difficult. And even though we oftentimes don't see God delivering us out of all our troubles, one thing we don't realize is that can also mean God delivers us through our troubles. Right, yes. And that's one thing we always need to remember. He may not take away a trouble but he'll give us strength to endure that trouble. Well, and every and time that strengthens us more and more. We don't like to think of it that way because exactly, we don't like yeah. the troubled times. But. Right, and, and, but you're absolutely right. That's why those troubled times are so important, even though, like you said, we don't like them. We, we don't enjoy them, but they're so important to prepare us for the bigger struggles, the yeah. bigger challenges to come. It's rough while you're in it, but when you get to that other side and he did bring you through it, it, yeah. it really does build your faith. And, uh, exactly. And that gives us assurance that God hears us mm -hmm. and he does deliver us through whatever our trouble is. But oftentimes it's through it, not around it. Right. And so we, we always need to remember that. Uh, I want to read quickly uh, Psalm 73, verse 23. And I'll have you read the next one. Okay. But as Psalms 73, verse 23 it says, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. And so what we need to remember is he is continually with us. Through all our adversity, through all our struggles, God is there. He will deliver us. So, you know, not only is, is God connected to us as our creator, but he's also connected to us as our sustainer. Well, and I like the hand because his hand is always out. And it's right it, when we let go, he's right. still there. Right. And that's hard to remember as well. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of times, and that's a, that's a valid point. You know, a lot of times we think of, of our Christian experience as uh, a walk upstairs 
toward, you know, we're all working up towards getting up to righteousness, the righteous standard of Christ. But really, our experience is not going upstairs. It's in mm -hmm. an elevator. You know, the reality is in our upward journey, sometimes we fall. But as long as we're in that elevator journey, you know, we're still moving upward and onward. I and say, it comes through connection with Christ. For personal experience, I look at it like climbing up a hill. But once you get to the top of that hill, typically it's you trip and you hit your head on everything rolling down that hill. And, and then right. you've got to start all over again. Right. <laughs> From right. personal experience, that's right. how my life typically goes. And, and, you know, that unfortunately, that's human nature. That's it why is. it's always a battle uh, fighting within ourselves. And sometimes those uh, struggles cause problems where we need to be delivered from our mm -hmm. trouble. But if you'll read uh, Psalms 145 verses 18 through 20. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Okay, so now this, this is what I was talking about earlier when I mentioned God hears all all pleas for deliverance from sin. But this is right here the condition upon which uh, continual deliverance lies. Continual deliverance lies in the Lord is near all them that call upon him mm -hmm. and to those that call upon him in what? In truth. And so that keeps that connection, our relationship is what continues our deliverance in our experience onward and forward. And so not only we see God as our creator, sustainer, but he is also personally and intimately involved in every aspect of his people. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a powerful example we have. But he hears us and he wants to fulfill our desires and he saves us and he will deliver us. And so uh, we, we serve a great and powerful God. Uh, but one thing I do want to point out, like the lesson points out, in the bottom of the lesson, it says, we should remember that the proper response to the Lord's nearness consists in a life of faith in him and of obedience to his commands, commandments. Nothing short of this faith and obedience will be acceptable to him, as the history of Israel often revealed. Hmm. And so that goes with what you would, had just read. And so... It's that continued connection with Christ that offers that continued deliverance from whatever our, our uh, trouble, whatever is troubling us. But going on, let's move to Sunday section. All right. And so we're going to be talking about my frame was not hidden from you. You know, we're going to be in Psalms 139. You know, this this psalm is very interesting because it points out uh, many attributes. Of God, because there are really four attributes of God that we're going to talk about. But if if you could start with uh, 139 verses 1 through 6. 1 through 6. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted in all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. All right. So here we see uh, the reality that God searches us. God knows us. He knows our thoughts before we do. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows our, what we're going to say before we do. Now, he doesn't control what we say. He right. doesn't control what we do, but he knows us better than we know ourselves. And it says anytime we go to do anything, he knows where, what we're doing, you know? And so it, it's an attribute of God. It's his, it's his omniscience, his, his, the idea that he knows all things. You know, he knows all things right. that all people are doing, that all people are thinking, you know, and I think this is kind of where people, myself included, we want to praise him and in the good times we have great things to say, but when we are struggling or when we are angry or when we're having a bad thought that we're struggling with, we mm -hmm. tend to hide that and back away from him instead right. of just saying, hey, I am very upset about this situation. Right. He knows you're upset. 
He understands right. what is really going on underneath all of that. And I believe when we talk to him about even those things, that right. he can help us through those as well. Well, and, and I think that's exactly right, because a lot of times we, we get this idea that we shouldn't, we shouldn't mention those mm -hmm. things. We shouldn't we mention should that look. we're angry with God. We, mm -hmm. You know, the reality is that we may be angry and we may direct that anger towards God. Mm -hmm. But when we actually verbalize it, like David, like Job in their experiences, then we're able to figure out how to deal with it. Because is God bigger than your anger? Yes. He can deal with your anger, and it's, it's only by giving it to God that we can actually get over it. Well, and it's even with the personal relationship. Like yeah. in a marriage, if I'm very angry with you about something that has happened and I'm hurt, but I ignore it and I keep just put it, pushing it back, eventually right. it's going to explode. But if we just sit and we talk about the situation and the emotions behind it, then it, you know, we can start to work on it and it gets better. Yeah. So yeah. it's the same thing with God. But I think we try to you know, have the Christian walk, the Christian look, right. instead of owning our struggles and you know, trying to be honest well, and, and that's, about them. And, and the, the reality is, it's only when we're honest with God that we can be honest with ourselves. Yeah. If you're angry with God, talk to him about mm -hmm. it. Because that, that's, you know, the, uh, Paul, Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit takes those words, takes those prayers. He's able to actually discern what the cause of it is. Mm -hmm. And he can interpret it for heaven. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so it's when we're being honest with our feelings, mm -hmm. with our anger, with our depression, whatever it may be, uh, resentment, when we take that to God, instead of trying to have this picture perfect life, like we don't, we have such a perfect walk with Christ. Well, right. it's, it's those struggles that make it real. And so we need to be real. Uh, because that's really what's going to change us inside is when we're honest with God and honest with ourselves. And uh, let's go from uh, verses 7 through 12. Mm -hmm. Where can I go from your spirit? Oh, where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I now, take stop right there mm -hmm. for a moment. Now that word hell... You know, most of the Christian world thinks, oh, that's, that's hell. That word is, is not hell. It, it is actually the word we get the, the term grave. If we're in the grave, you know, so I, I want to make that distinction that he's saying, whether I'm here in the, in, the, in the sky ascending to the heavens or if I am dead in the grave, he says, where can I go that you're not going to be there? You're, you're there. So, go on. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. All right, so now, now we just covered God's omniscience, right? He knows everything. But now we're covering God's omnipresence. He's present everywhere. Now, there is a belief out there that he is in the earth. He's in the trees. He's in all this. That's, that's you know, God is everything. Their nature is an extension of God. That's, that's not what it means. God is aware of everything, but he's not in everything. That's panantheism, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, that is not a biblical teaching. But God is omnipresent. He knows what's going on. He can be in all places at all times. Yeah, it says the darkness and the light. You could think of that as darkness or light or also your deep depression versus yeah. your yeah. mountaintop experience. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's both places, yet we as people view that differently. We feel yeah. it differently. Yeah. And so it, it's important for us to remember whether we are experiencing good times or bad times, we're not out of God's reach. Mm -hmm. God is there. He is ever present. You know, he is an ever present help in trouble, right? Well, like that other verse we read, his hand is there. Yeah. We just have to take it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and he says, anyone that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out, right? 
And Revelation talks about, you know, he will be in, you'll be in his hand and no man can pluck him out, right? But can you choose to step out? Definitely can. You can. But nobody can take you out of his hand. And so we just have to keep his care, uh, trust in his care. All right, let's read uh, 13 through 18. We'll finish this one up. 18. For you have formed my inward parts. You have covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they are... They all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. All right. And so now what what are we getting a picture of? You know, this is David talking. This is ta- he's talking about before he was even conceived. Mm-hmm. In the womb. In the womb. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, that's what he says. You, it says in verse 13 in King James, it says, you possess my reins. What did it say in hmm. that one? Uh, let's see. You have formed me, you have my formed inward me. parts. Yeah, and so that word possessed in the King James actually means created. You formed me. You formed me together. And it said you covered me. You knit me together. And so as we think about the conception of a child being born, developing in the womb, you know, God was intricately involved in that whole process. And so David is, is verifying, you know, even when I was being developed before these things ever happened, before my sinews were attached to my body, before the, the everything began its activity in my body, you were there. You knew what was going on with me before anything. And so God has a foreknowledge of everything. But also, so we see, we've seen his omniscience. He knows all. We've seen his omnipresence. But also we see his, omni, his omnipotence. He is all powerful. Because while well, he sets up kings, he takes down kings. Mm-hmm. He, he is able to, to heal and to form and to sustain he doesn't have to think about it just like every day. We don't have to think about, okay, I need to breathe. Okay, my heart needs to beat because God has set all that stuff in motion. But also one thing we see in the creation of man and the sustaining of life is that his omnibenevolence. He is full of all goodness. Well, what you said a minute ago, it reminds me too how, you know, we're born just knowing how to do certain things. Yeah. Uh, I see God in nature a lot. Like, yeah. you know, with turtles, they just know yeah. what to do. There's no one there showing them what to yeah. do. They just know yeah. what to do. They know where to go. Yeah. And they all do the exact same thing. Yeah. And it, I, even since I was young, I've always wondered how in the world right. creatures just know what to do. Yeah. No one's there to teach them. They just do it. And it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it, it really is. But, you know, the... The main thing we see in, in man is that our being men and women ourselves is we see the goodness of God. Mm-hmm. God wants the best for his creatures, so he is omnibenevolent. He wants nothing but the best for all his created things. And so it, it's, it's really amazing when we look at uh, how deeply involved and deeply acquainted he is with his creation. But... Uh, Let's move on from there. We're going to move into uh, Monday's section. We're going to look at the assurance of God's care. Uh, The assurance of God's care. What do you think of when you think of assurance? Maybe uh, a guarantee, a A promise. Yeah, guarantee, assurance. Uh, The definition says, uh, uh, or should I say a Christian definition rather than the Bible dictionary or Uh, Webster Dictionary. (laughs) It says, a believer's confidence in God, God's response to prayer, and the hope of eternal life. Assurance. Confidence, I like that. And so it's, it's important. Assurance of God's care. A lot of times we don't necessarily see past the struggle, but we look beyond that to the promise 
the assurance. Well, I really do like that it says confidence because mm -hmm. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes it's easy for that confidence to kind of waver when you're, yeah. when you're going through those yeah. tough times. Yeah, and, and that's one thing we see in, with David and his whole experience. It, and even the, the disciples, you know, they had, they had, talk about the Apostle Paul, he had bitter times of disappointment mm -hmm. and struggles, but he said, in spite of that, I still press forward because I know God's working. He's, he's doing a special thing, mm -hmm. and I, I know I'm going to make it through this. Mm -hmm. And he says, whether I live or die, it doesn't matter. He says, if I die, that's, that's fine. But if I live, then I'm going to live like Christ. You know, so it's, it's whether we need to have that perspective in our struggles and the assurance of God's care. Well, and the crazy thing, too, is our struggles can help other people. Yeah. Uh, just like all these stories in Psalms, it's basically about all their struggles, yet we're, yeah. we're drawing great strength from that. And I feel like when people see you know, the people who look like Christians and, you right. know, they look like they got it all together. Just knowing that they struggle just like everybody else, right. it really does help well, to it, make it, you realize it, that that is a normal thing in life, this life anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Romans tells us that all things were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Mm -hmm. When we look at these mega people of faith, and we realized, looking at their lives, they were not different mm -hmm. than we are. They had terrible struggles. Yes, they did. But they had the assurance because they continued to hold on to that promise. In spite of their shortcomings, they said, you know, and, you know, this isn't, this isn't in the lesson, and it's not in, in Psalms, but I want us to turn to uh, Philippians because this is actually one of my favorite texts, and I hold to it very often because our human nature can really discourage us at times. Yes, it can. But uh, thinking about the struggles we face in Philippians chapter 3, uh, let's start at verse 10. It says, uh, do you want to read that? Sure. 10 and 10 and 11 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Okay, so he says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering mm -hmm. being conformed to his death. So we are, are yearning to be like Christ in all things. I'm well, looking at his sufferings. Yeah. Can only pray that I would be strong enough to go through something and like that. He'll and give us the faith when we need that. Right. That's what's so amazing. But go on to verse 12. Verses 12 through 14 is really what, what hits me the most. Not that I have already attained or am already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Jesus Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. All right. And so that's the assurance of God's care. That's the assurance, the confidence that it's said in God's response to prayer and the hope of eternal life. Paul says, I'm forgetting about those things in my past. And I'm pressing forward. To that prize that's before me and that's the high calling in Christ and that's what David was doing that's what all the 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 followers of Christ were doing throughout the ages of Bible history is in in spite of the challenges they were facing they were continually pressing forward mm -hmm. and that's what we need to do as well but let's look at Psalms 40 verses uh, 1 through 3 One through three? Yep. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. All right, so David, 
He says, I waited patiently on the Lord. We're not good at patient. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we tend not to be, but that's, that's why uh, it's important to, to grow we, in that patient experience. We have a get it right now society. Right. You want McDonald's, they'll bring it to your door right now. Right. I mean. But I waited patiently for the Lord. Notice, now this is in reference to, to God looking at David like a little child because notice what he does. He inclined to me. In other words, David was patiently waiting on the Lord and God inclined. God leaned over. Kind of like when you're talking to a child, you get down with them. Mm -hmm. And it says, he heard my cry. He brought me up. He picked me up out of a horrible pit. He brought me out of the mire he set my feet on a rock. Have you ever been in that kind of place where you're just so down, you're just like, God, Oh yeah. there's nothing yeah. left. Pull me out. Yeah, and uh, oftentimes it's not until we fall on the rock mm -hmm. that he can lift us up. Yeah. But he says, he established my goings. He knows where we're going, what we're doing. He will guide our path if we let him. Mm -hmm. But then notice he says, he put a new song in my heart. That reminds me of Revelation 14, which we're not going to go there. But Revelation 14 talks about the 144,000. Mm -hmm. And one thing they are given a new song. is a new song. That song is a song of their experience. It's a song of their, their personal experience. It's the song of their redemption. And it's the song of victory. But only those who re redeemed and trusted beyond, they had the assurance and held to the assurance, they're the ones that will sing that new song. And that's what David's talking about. So it's, you know, when we think of patience, you know, Jesus tells us, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Ooh. You know, that's, <laughs> it's trusting in his patience in spite of ourselves. And, uh, Definitely need help in that area. And uh, Revelation twelve fourteen says, here are the patience mm -hmm. of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. So, you know, it's, it's all part of the growing experience. And James even talks about it in chapter 1, how, how patience has to have its perfect work in us. So, Man, I'm learning but, things today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have things to learn. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's as goes back to what we said earlier. It's being honest with God and honest with ourselves in those challenging times. Mm -hmm. But turn to Psalms 50, mm -hmm. verse uh, 15. 50, 15? Yep. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Call upon me in the day of trouble. You know, we should call upon God in our day of trouble. Mm -hmm. But the reality is we should call upon God always. Mm -hmm. But it's in these times of trouble we face every day that prepare us for the larger ones to come. Mm -hmm. But he says, call upon me. I will deliver and you will glorify me. And that goes back to singing the new song mm -hmm. because God delivers. But uh, let's go ahead and turn to... Uh, Tuesday section. The Lord is a refuge in adversity. You know, the reality is, how many of you are without adversity? Can anybody raise their hand? We are all, the reality of life is we will face adversity. We will face trouble. Sometimes it's easier than others, and sometimes it seems like one after another mm -hmm. comes. Mm hmm but when we say the Lord is a refuge, what is a refuge? It's a safe place. It's a safe shelter. place, a shelter. And uh, now I'm not talking about a safe place from words in our society. I'm not talking about that kind of safe place. But a safe place of refuge, a place of protection, a place of safety, that is both physical and spiritual. Because sometimes we need protection and safety spiritually. Most of the yeah. time, that's where it all begins, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so we need that safety. But John 16, 33 says, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So it's, there's no question we're all going to face trouble. Some trouble will be worse than others, but we will all, all face it. But Jesus says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That's hard to understand. It's going to be horrible, but be happy about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, right. you know, and that's, that's one thing we begin to realize. And, and even, even Paul talks about it in Hebrews. I, uh, you know, whatever state you're in, learn to be content. That's not always easy. Mm. But one thing he also adds to that is that he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And so in spite of what situation we're in, uh, we can trust that he's going to get us through. We can trust that. And uh, we need to lean on, as we pointed out uh, the week before last, we need to lean on our past experience with what he has done for us because that will help us Mm -hmm. through the future and through Mm -hmm. the present. But now let's, uh, let's go to Psalm 17. We're going to look at Psalm 17, uh, verses 7 through 9. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand, O you who save those who trust in you, from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings, from the wicked one who oppresses me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. Mm. So what does he say in verse 7? He says, show your marvelous marvelous loving kindness. kindness." Show it to me. I like eight. Keep me as the apple of your eye. That really shows a very tender place for us. Tender place. And also the the last half of that says, hide me. Mm -hmm. Keep me. Hide me. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the promise that he will do those things. He will keep us. He will hide us from our oppressors. And from the enemy. And so we have that, that promise. And it's, it's, it's all based on our past experience. We trust on what God has done for us in the past. And so we can trust that he's going to continue today and even into the future. And so it's, it's a powerful thing when we look at it. And let's face it, David did not have a rosy path. And much of the path he created himself. Mm-hmm. But he continued to trust in spite of that. Granted, he needed a conversion experience, which he got when Nathan the prophet came and told him, hey, you know, it's you that troubles Israel. Uh, but It would have been painful to hear. It would have been painful to hear, but it was a realization that he had to hear. Mm-hmm. Because what happened is he blinded his eyes to everything he was doing. Well, and that was a turning point. Either he could have, he could have gone one way or the oh, other absolutely. there. So. Well, I mean, look at the, the other kings of Israel. When, when Jeremiah came and, and said, hey, <laughs> you need to get back on the right path, they, they took his letter and tossed it in the fire. They, they put him in prison. They put him in a pit. So it, you know, it could have went either way, but he had a tender heart, and that's yeah. what God wants, a uh, tender heart. Uh, chapter 31, verses 1 through 3. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lend me, lead me, and guide me. All right, so we see, I put my trust in you. And he says, I will never be ashamed. You know, think about Job and his experience with his, his wife telling him, just curse God and die. Mm. But Job was not ashamed of God. He said, I will put my trust in God in spite of what's going on in my life right now. And I don't understand what's going on right now. A lot of times we don't understand what's going on. But he says, I'm going to trust. I'm not going to be ashamed. And he says, deliver me. And he says, you will deliver me. And so it's important that the Lord is our refuge in our adversity, 
in our struggles. And uh, I want to read a couple more verses here. Uh, let's go to uh, Psalms, Psalms 91 and verses 2 through 7. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terrors by night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right side, but it shall not come near you. All right, so now we understand this to in particular be talking about the, uh, the seven last plagues, mm -hmm. right? The time of trouble. Um, and here we're looking at the assurance that God will protect his people because you have made him your refuge. You have made him your fortress. He says, my God it, in him will I trust. And so we can trust through time of adversity. We can trust through time of pestilence. You know, we, we should be familiar with that recently. We should trust in time of pestilence. We should trust in time of war. Now, it's a whole lot different story when you're, literally in war mm -hmm. but yeah, we're but called to trust it's easy to say it and know it yes. and read about it but when it's you it is a whole different yeah. thing like we look at job's story and it, we just assume that he was a man of god it must have been easy for him but i mean he was in a deep dark oh uh, it, it just everything bad that could happen happened, right you know so yeah uh, but it just goes show god wants to give us the assurance that he is our refuge in these easy times to prepare us for the more difficult times. And so uh, Isaiah 41, verse 10, then we're going to switch over. Turn to Isaiah 41, verse 10. I know it's not in uh, the lesson, but uh, Isaiah 41, 10. And while she's doing that, uh, Isaiah 26, verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. And so when we truly put our trust in God, he gives us peace that is beyond all understanding, even in our adversity. What was so, it, Isaiah? Isaiah 41, verse 10. I'll be there eventually. Well, those Bear are with me. chapters. <laughs> 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All right, so we have the assurance. He says, fear not. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. He says, I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So he is our refuge in time of adversity. Uh, let's turn to uh, Wednesday's section. And we're going to look at God as our defender and our deliverer. Now, what is a defender? Someone who fights for you. Someone who fights for you. That's, that's a good protects definition. Protects you. Right. So uh, I have two definitions. A defender, is, according to the dictionary, is a person who defends someone or something. Uh, the Bible definition is one who defends, maintains, supports, protects, vindicates. He's a champion, an advocate, and a vindicator. So he is a defender. So God is our defender. But now what is a deliverer? Someone who... I was going to say delivers, but that seems a little... <laughs> well, I mean, that, that he's one who delivers, one who rescues, right? Rescues. A savior. There you go. And so God is our defender. He fights for us. He is also our deliverer. He rescues us. And so it, God is there at all times fighting for us. And in particular, when we look at... Um, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 10 about how 
Israel's experience in the Exodus, that was all a, a type, if you will, of the grand deliverance that will take place. You know, so, you know, Egypt was, you know, a symbol of bondage, a symbol of, of sin, right? Because you were delivered out of bondage. Well, sin is bondage. Mm. And Jesus is going to have a grand exodus at his return, right? Where we will be delivered from sin and death, the bondage of sin and death. And so this is, you know, Paul was trying to compare the Exodus story to the Christian experience. You know, just like when they came out of Egypt, they came out of bondage. Then it says they walked through the Red Sea, right? They were baptized. They came into the promised land, their experience. God defended them. God delivered them just like he is going to defend and he is going to deliver his people. Carried now, them through. He carried them fighting, through. Fighting him and exactly. backsliding and, and all the nonsense. Uh, with that in mind, uh, let's turn to Daniel chapter 12. I know it's not in the lesson, but thinking about how he is our deliverer and our, our, our defender and our deliverer, you know, we're told in Daniel that there is a time of trouble coming such as never was, right? Mm -hmm. So let's read chapter 12, verse 1. Just one? Yeah. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as there never was, so, since there never ever was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. All right, so in this final conflict, there will be a time of trouble such as never was. Nothing can compare to it. Mm -hmm. Any adversity we've experienced, but that adversity we experience in this life is to prepare us to put that trust in Christ during that time of trouble mm -hmm. such as never was. Yeah, imagine if your life yeah. is all smooth sailing and you get to something like that. Yeah, I yeah mean, you're not prepared you have? for it. You would you're not, not be prepared. prepared at all. And so that's what this adversity is that we face in this life. We face those to prepare us for the climactic events to come, come in. And according to this, that conflict such as never was, the time when no man will be able to buy or sell, he says that Michael stands up. Michael, you know, the, it actually means he who is as God. Well, it's not, it's not a question, it's a statement. He who is as God stands up. Jesus stands up for his people to deliver them. He doesn't do it before the trouble comes. He does it through the trouble and he brings it to an end. He cuts it short in righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so if we have the assurance that he will fight for us then, he will fight for us now and in that time to come. You know, Jesus said... I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And so we can have the assurance that he will see us through this. He'll see us through the final conflict. He'll defend us, and he will deliver his people. And so it's, it's a promise that we can take uh, to the bank. <laughs> you know? So, But uh, let's move on as in the short time remaining to Thursday's section. Help from the sanctuary. You know, a lot of times we look at the sanctuary. Well, how does help come from the sanctuary? Who's in the sanctuary? Jesus. Jesus is. Well, in the Old Testament, as a matter of fact, when we look at that, when the Old Testament started from the tabernacle to the temple of Solomon, uh, when God was there, what was there? The cloud of smoke. Oh, right. Yeah. Cloud of... The, the fire by, by night and the cloud by day, God was there. His presence was there. So when we say help from the sanctuary, it's really help from the person who's in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Psalm 73, 17 says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. It's not until we go to the sanctuary that we understand the plan of salvation. And that's why it's in. Uh, it goes on further in 7070 says, Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. 
So if we want to understand what God's deliverance is all about, we need to look at the sanctuary. When deliverance comes, the forgiveness of sin comes as a result of the work that he was doing in the sanctuary, but now it's not the earthly sanctuary. It's the heavenly sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's look at Psalms chapter 3, verse 4. We're going to finish up here in what little time we have. While you're doing that, I'm going to mm -hmm. turn to Psalms 14, 7. Psalms 3, verse 4 for you. 3, 4. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Okay, so he heard me from his holy hill, or some translations say, from his holy mountain. Hmm. Do you know where that holy mountain is? It's Mount Zion. What was Mount Zion? That was the place where the temple was built. Now, as that, that temple's destroyed, Mount Zion is still there, but that's where, when he says Mount Zion, when help came from Mount Zion, it was from the temple. That's what he's talking about. Mount Zion was always about the temple. He heard him out of the sanctuary. But uh, Psalms 14, 7 says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. So deliverance comes out of the Mount Zion. It comes out of the sanctuary. And so if you'll turn to uh, Psalms 20 verses 1 through 3, and we're going to wrap this up here. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God, the God of Jacob, defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he, rem Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Okay, so it says once again, help comes out of the sanctuary. Help comes from the presence of God. Mm -hmm. That's who's in the sanctuary. That's where help comes from. Uh, Psalm 61.4, uh, if you want to turn to Revelation 21. So uh, Psalm 61, 4, it says this, and uh, we'll just have two more scripture and then we'll put a bow on this. Psalm 61, 4 says, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. What's the tabernacle? The sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. The tabernacle, the sanctuary, the temple, that's where God dwells. He says, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the, in the co covert of the wings. So he will trust. He will abide in God's sanctuary. He will abide in God's presence. And let's see in Revelation, the final, uh, the chapter 21, mm -hmm. we see fulfillment of this promise. Revelation 21, verses 2 and 3. 2 and 3. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. All right, so right here we see the fulfillment of that promise. David says, I will dwell abide in the sanctuary forever. God's people will abide in God's sanctuary forever in his presence. It says he will dwell with them. He will be their God. The reality is when we see help comes from the sanctuary, it comes because we have a great high priest in the sanctuary. Amen. And I'm going to finish off with this text in 14 uh, Hebrews chapter 4. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Friends, when we need help, it comes from the sanctuary because Christ 
ever lives to make intercession for us. And he says, if you need, if you need mercy, if you need grace, come to him and he will help in your time of need. And so with that in mind, it's such a blessing to know that he hears us and he will deliver us. Uh, with that said, would you like to mm -hmm. have our free um, free yeah, offer? The offer. offer. <laughs> the free offer today is the faith of Desmond Doss uh, it's from the movie. They made a movie out of it, Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, if you would like this, go to our website, click on free offer, and we will get that right to you. And while you are there, check out our God-led Bible school studies. Um, it's a really good group of studies. If you want to know more about that, just check it out online. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that, that you are our deliverer, that you do hear our prayer. Just go with us, abide with us, help us to put our trust and confidence in you. And we know that you'll hear us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we will be right back. <laughs>